seven of you who kept the applause going till I got to the stage. <laughs> using goddamn cheap-ass coupons to get in here, and you're just sitting there going, well, he should be here by now. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's taking him so long. He better hurry up. Yep. Do this for me before we go any further. Give a nice big round of applause for the entire show, because it was a powerful show, was it not? sitting there. I don't want to clap. I have no idea. And uh, happy holidays to you kids. I'm telling you, if you only see one show on a Wednesday with a coupon all year, this would be the show to see. Wouldn't it, sir? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> happy holidays to you kids. Thank you. Thank you. Same you. Very nice. You're the spokesperson for the group there. Same you, sir. <laughs> had a very pleasant holiday, although I did not, I have no idea where I'm going to start because I didn't, man, there are tons of people here and I got to move back because I didn't realize we sat people that get to watch comics butts for 20 minutes at a time. That's, <laughs> thanks for coming early. <laughs> I had a pleasant holiday. I did not have a pleasant day yesterday because I'll just get some stuff off my chest before I tell some jokes. There is only one thing that we hate more than moving. Helping someone else move. <laughs> I will be goddamn. You, you pick up. It's my sister, so I had to go. The phone rings at nine in the morning yesterday morning, and she starts with that. Will you help me move? Question. It's disguise. It starts like this. What are you doing today? <laughs> You may not have been doing anything that day, but the only thing that can go through your mind are the things that you could have possibly done with that day. I don't know. I'll have to think about crunching some numbers and helping out with the national debt. I've been putting it off of... All right, I'll help you move your goddamn mattress. All right, fine. So I had a very pleasant uh, holidays and stuff like that. I, uh, well, we find out some Democrats. You guys have seen a lot of show and a lot of things have been covered. I don't want to go back over any stuff. So help me out. What's been covered in tonight's show so I don't go over any other stuff? Masturbation. Boom. Number one. How about that? That's what these people are going home with tonight. I went to see a show and masturbation. That's all I remember. Wow. So then there was like over you, you guys and then someone over there. So it was a whole... It's your sister. And she masturbates. And apparently there was a lot more going on in this show than I care to really... I've opened up an ugly can of worms if we had sister up here just masturbating and this man was taking notes. <laughs> this is your sister and this man says that she masturbates. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a fine sister that's going, well, whatever, man, sure. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> well, other than master... What was that? You might only have one. Oh, you only have one to stick up for yourself. Are you guys at the right meeting? I have a feeling some of you people have been here so long you actually think it's a 12-step program and you're just waiting for the part of the show and we all get to hug. What else has been covered in the show? The ball's still in your court. What else? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson's been covered. What? Smoking? S&M? Oh. President, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just guessed S&M would come out of the masturbation, sister. That's all. I, that's, a, that's my fault. It's an honest mistake, isn't it, sir? <laughs> Michael Jackson, masturbation, and the president. That's what we've said so far. What else? Mexican, blacks, and Asian people. Mexican, blacks, and Asian people. We have a rainbow coalition speech going on somewhere in the middle of the show? Well, we had the ribbon stop by. Jesse Jackson popped in on the show. How about that? Uh, dogs barking underwater. Dogs barking underwater. Bob Barker. Bob Barker. What was that? Cover some OJ. Because, you know, we don't get enough OJ coverage in the day. What the hell cave have you been living in that you don't wander out and go, what's up with OJ? It's a guy channel as far as we're concerned he's on every damn day i'm gonna kill him like i've got some sort of information on oj that no one else knows i did the holiday stuff i did that type of i was in la uh yesterday i drove down here 
and I used a 405. That was my freeway of choice. Now someone explain this to me. Where is it on the carpool lane sign, the diamond lane sign, does it say Audubon? Where is that on there? No, really, is there a reason people are going at Mach 7 up and down this lane? What do you think, it's 55 miles per hour per person you have in the car? Six people, that's infinity! <laughs> people get to their destinations before they actually left. I don't even know how that happens. And I went up to, uh, well, this wasn't yesterday, but I went up to Magic Mountain. That was the other time I used the goofy 405. I went to Magic Mountain. And I've not been in a long time to Magic Mountain, so I'm pretty convinced that everyone who works at Magic Mountain, they're all 10 years old. I'm pretty convinced. All, they're all little kids running the park. And you know what? I know this is not politically correct, and I know this is age discrimination, but I really don't care. This is how I feel. When it comes to my own personal safety, I don't want the last checkpoint of security to be in the hands of a 16-year-old kid. I'm sorry. Excuse me, I don't think this is buckled down all the way. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> and it is the only theme park in America where you actually have to pass through a metal detector to get out of the park. I'm walking out there passing over, boop, 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 boop. Excuse me, sir, I believe you still have a quarter left in your pocket. <laughs> Come on, you know the rules. No one leaves with money. Flip it in the basket. <laughs> I've been out of town for a while. I had a very pleasant Christmas, so I had two kids. I spent the Christmas hanging out with the kids. Thanks so much. Attaboy. Thank you, sir. It's turned into a rally all of a sudden. I don't even... <laughs> And uh, let me tell you something about uh, San Diego that I, that I make my home here, yeah, but I don't spend that much time here. But I will never, ever, ever again go shopping at Horton Plaza during Christmas time. I'm sorry. Can I tell you something? Chicken. Well, <laughs> let me tell you something. When you build a mall, <laughs> build something practical. Build something I can go into and get out of and get whatever the hell it is I want to get. Oh, sure, Horton Plaza is nice to look at, but you go up and down and down to go up. We can go there right now. There are 30-year-old people trapped in the mall going, I can see the Mervins, but I can't get to it! while I was there, I went to Mrs. Fields and put a cookie on layaway. I'm very proud of that. That should be ready by next Christmas. And I think because Christmas fell on Sunday, we should have gotten an extra day. Do our little shop. That's what I think we should have. Just like the Rose Bowl and the Rose Parade, we should have gotten an extra day. How many people in this room are last-minute Christmas shoppers? I'm pretty goddamn proud of it. Those are the people, man. I like the people that plan to go last-minute Christmas shopping. I am one of those people. We plan on it, and I have something to say on behalf of all the people that plan to go last-minute shopping, and this is to all of you people who don't plan to go last-minute Christmas shopping. Move! We are sick and goddamn tired of seeing you out there every single year looking like Christmas took you by surprise again. It's December 25th. Write it down if you have to. Crane out loud just, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Just move! I'm a man. All men firmly believe this. Hell, Thrifties was open on Christmas Day. As long as there's a 7-Eleven open, somebody's getting some Christmas presents. I'll tell you that right now. As long as I can get my hands on some big pins and Slurpee cups, I can make a home entertainment center. I'll tell you that. Oh. And this is what I want me find this out before because I, I found out because we got a lot of lovely, groovy love couples, so I think that's because every show I do is different because I have no clue as to what I'm doing. Um, we're gonna, because a lot of the groovy love couples, I think that's where we're gonna gear the show. Are we married here? We're not married. Have we been talked to already? Talk to. Do I need a Caucasian translator? What the hell just happened there? What the, what the hell was that? That was talk to and the man is he gonna rap? What the hell's going on, man? That was very strange. 
have that you've been talked to? Do we know any information about you? That would be the question. I'm an engineer. Okay, so we do. Wait, hang on. <laughs> hang on, because we've got a big old, like, Ricky Lake show breaking out right now. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is going on here. I asked him a question, some guy yelled at you, you know, no, hold on a second. <laughs> I don't know what the hell made two people snap just like that. <laughs> Didn't have shit to say before, but when somebody gets something wrong, uh-uh. They tell you something, they are not engineers. <laughs> Computer people is what you guys, engineers are next door. <laughs> Good thing the masturbating sister showed up. <laughs> you guys would be lost without her. She's here to lead you people. Apparently she calls you all in. Look, I've got coupons. Oh, 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 oh. The masturbating sister? Yeah, single man. Oh, oh, oh. Who will be there? Oh, oh, oh. Engineer next door, computer guy. Computer guy. And we're not married. We're dating? Dating. You guys are really tense right now. I, let me explain something to you. I've been doing this for quite some time, and I'm never mean. Anytime I talk to an audience member, I'm never mean. I'm just asking questions, that's all. I'm not going to go, what do you do for a living? You're a dick! I'm not doing that at all. It takes no talent to do that, because you call the guy a dick, and everyone's laughing, and the guy's sitting there going, look, he just called me a dick. He is so good at this. Wow, I, I couldn't have been called a dick at home. I'm so glad I came out for this. So just relax. It's just me talking. I've been doing this a long time. I do this in every city in the country, so. So we, have to, we are just dating. How long have we been going out? A couple of months. Couple, did you know a couple of months before she said a couple of months? I knew that. All right, I'm moving on. Just relax. He's on every channel. And don't worry, I won't talk to all of you. I'm just looking for some. To, I'm going to this couple right here, the engineer man. Mary? How long? Ever. <laughs> Been married forever. Hell, as far as I know, she came with the house. <laughs> That's a pretty smooth amenity right there. Oh, and just came in the house. That's, well, that's smooth. That is so, so... You came before the... Oh, well, came before the house. Now, how, now, now, do we have a number as far as how long you've been married? It's 1050. 26 years. Wow. <laughs> you guys are nuts, actually, because... It was just like the young people first went, wow. Just like, just like, oh, that's what they look like. I've, uh, I've read a lot about them in the Time Life books. That's them. Look at them. What I hear he's so mean, he once shot a man for storm. That's the guy. 26 years, and then you guys kind of went nuts. Are we married here? You guys look very nice together. Very, very smooth ensemble. Uh, are you married? Yeah, how long have you been married? Six years. Tell me this. How long did you go out before you got married? I'm buying you a new one. <laughs> oh, how long? About a year. Is that right? How long did you go out before you got married? Really yeah, like exactly. Psh, hell, I don't know, man. You see, first I had an apartment. I don't remember anyone ever being there, so... Couldn't have been there. <laughs> Very impressed, sir. Very impressed that you got the number right. Very impressed that you just went boom right there. Number, this is it. You didn't even look at her. That's very, very rare. Anytime you ask a guy how, you know what? It's not that we don't love you. It's just we forget numbers. That's all. You ask a guy how long you've been married. You say, oh, uh, honey, want to handle this, honey? I, oh no, I love you to death. I just don't know how long you've been here. That's all. I, I know exactly how many tools I have. Not how long your ass been in this house. I'm sorry. <laughs> We don't care, just we forget. That's all. That is all that's going on. We just forget. So, girls' night out thing happening here? Yeah. <laughs> just girls, just girls getting out. How many are in your pack there? Four in a pack. That's what they travel in packs. <laughs> and you just girls going out, just celebrating. Uh huh. All right. Not anything particular. Just celebrate. Just get girls over Because that's what they do when they're not celebrating anything in particular. Get out in packs. Because what they do is they watch Oprah all week. 
pick a night, go out and piss men off as a group. That's their job. That's what they're doing. Are we married here? How long have you been married? Nineteen years. You here for the holiday bowl? Yes, you are. Are you, are you a member of the Colorado State coaching staff? No, just a booster or a fan? Employee. Employee of Colorado State? Of what? You work at the university, employee of Colorado State. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a, a fine institution. Um, communication major? Um, back off. You work at the university. Who are you guys playing? University of Michigan. Oh, we had some Michigan folks in here last night. They were, they were very good folk. Uh, anyway, I'll get back to you in a second. See, this is why I go everywhere. Do we have people that are from the Midwest here? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's see. yeah. yeah. I work a lot in the Midwest, and this is what I found out about the people of the Midwest. They are some of the friendliest people I have ever met. Because this is what was going on. In the, the Michigan people were just yelling up, talking to me like no one else was here. They just feel so friendly and just always smiling, always nodding. You know what they are? They're suspicious friendly. That's what they are. You can be friendly to a point where you go, all right, what do you know? That's what I'm saying. Because I'm standing in line. I'm in uh, Oklahoma City, and I'm standing in line at uh, some grocery store, and there's a woman standing in front of me, and she just turns around to me and goes, hi! <laughs> hi! My sister's having an operation today. I don't care. Just buy your shit and get away from me. It's just, just kind of odd for me, and they, they are some of the most long-winded people I've ever seen in my life. There is no such word in a Midwesterner's vocabulary as a short story. No, it has to be from beginning to end. It's just, I don't want to hear about, when I ask you how was your day, I just mean that day. That's all I mean. I mean every goddamn day you've had in your life. Well, how was your day? When I was seven, I had a wagon. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. Here's what you do. Here's what you do with people from the Midwest. If you ever get caught in one of them long-winded conversations, there are four things that you can say during any conversation with a person in the Midwest will get you through every single conversation. Because listen to this, once they start a story, they don't care whether or not what's going on, they will finish that story. So just say four things, these are three things in the middle, and then one thing at the end to wrap it up, get you through every single conversation you have. Just throw them in. Mm-hmm. That's a damn shame. That'll get you through. Get you through every single conversation. And if they're not finished, start over again. They're not paying any attention. Now, you kids been married for 19 years. And we got 26 years over here. Tell us this. Why? All right, sir. I want to. What, you said what? Tell us what? Why? Tell us why? Why they've been married? Are you married? No. Yeah, big surprise. Um, <laughs> Fine, fine. They don't listen to these people. 26 years they've been together. They don't even know how long they went out before they get together. 26 years. Uh, what's the secret to keeping a relationship together for 26 years? This man would obviously like to know. He travels a lot. <laughs> travels a lot. Plenty of yard work, apparently. 19 years. What's the secret over there? <laughs> honey, honey, honey. What is the secret, honey? What's the secret? Good sex. Good sex. Well, a woman over there. <laughs> well, I'll tell something about you. You have some really wacky answers, but you work well as a group. I'll tell you that one right now. Look, if you can't answer, I got your back. I'll tell you over here. <laughs> and, uh, well, you work on the answer. I'm going to talk to the good sex woman for a second here. Uh, are we talking good sex as far as uh, quality or quantity? Oh, both. Both. Wow, that's a male answer, actually. A <laughs> man are just, well, as long as you're there, pretty much, just, just show up. Um, do we know what you see? Ask a therapist. <laughs> all right, all right. You know what? I've had my fair share of relationships. Let me tell you something. I don't know. I have no idea. Not a single clue as to what's going on. I know this. What was that? You're like eight questions behind, Sparky. Look. <laughs> he threw up sex, and all of a sudden he just flatlined. Sex. 
sex. Let's have some. Where? Get some. Sex. Need sex. Where's sex? I need sex. 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 <laughs> he just derailed him with one sex. 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 Spray in there. Just sex and then boom, the guy's gone. Sex with whom? Is what you're asking? Sex with whom, ma'am? With what? With their husband, sir. You might have to take a number. You think they're lying? What, you just sound like the most bitter man that they are just plucking. I think you might have shown up for the hug is what's going on. All right, now, are you dating? Are you dating this fine woman right here that's on your arm? Yes, you are, Mr. Galakowicz. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. You're dating her? Yes, I am. <laughs> and how long have you kids been going out? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Are you, uh, uh, have you been married before, sir? No. No. Okay. You have the disposition of a, of a, you know, really, a, of a burned man, actually, is what it is. You have the disposition of a man who had to sell his house. Um, Is a lie. You think that the 26 years are you very just anti-marriage? No. You just think these people are liars. Well, I'm not against the institution. It's just those people I don't care for. Well, sir, let me tell you this. As far as what my knowledge has gone into. Are you married? Yes, sir. How many kids? Two kids. <laughs> for Christmas. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? Bikes for Christmas for kids. Bikes. Oh, man, man. Bikes, it makes us even pipe up. Oh, bikes. Because that's, that's an excitable gift. And uh, someone asked me if you're going to get the uh, helmets to go with the bike, because that's the law now. And I said, I'll get them, but not just yet, because here's my protest. I remember, and I hate to sound like I'm being this little wax nostalgic type of thing, but I remember when a bicycle was the gift. That was it. There were no other accessories that had to go with the bicycle. The bicycle was the gift. Granted, the helmet makes it a lot safer, but let me tell you this. I rode a bike just as much as you and just as much as any other kid that I know of, and not once did I ever fall and hit my head, not once did I ever even hear of one of my friends receiving a head injury. Because, isn't it... Isn't it instinctual that if you were to fall, you try to break that fall by putting up your hands? We have a lot of straight knees, a lot of straight elbows, but never once anybody. Now, what the hell happened during the evolutionary chart? When kids got so goddamn stupid that when they're falling off a bike, they go, whoa! did that, boom, just hit their head. Someone said, well, we got to make a law. That's what we need to do. No, the problem is not that. The problem is getting rid of stupid-ass kids. That's what the problem is. Here's my point. I don't care how this sounds or how cold and callous this is, but listen up. If you have a kid that falls off a bicycle and hits his head without ever making an effort to try and break that fall, that is not a tragedy. That is natural selection. <laughs> It's time to thin the herd, all right? <laughs> now, uh, you got me off on another tangent. See what happens, sir? I would talk, now, let me talk about some relationship stuff because I think that going into any single, any single relationship, this is the advantage. All women have an advantage going into any relationship, and this is it. The girls' night out thing, it's their friends. It's their friends. Every single woman has a group of friends that they talk to. Tell them everything. Yeah. Everything. They tell their friends absolutely everything. Yeah. Let me explain to you what I mean by everything, because a lot of guys are looking at me like, well, what you mean by everything? Let me explain. Everything, gentlemen, listen up. What they like about you, what they don't like about you. How big, how small, how fast, everything. 
everything. Every single thing. Remember that night you got all liquored up, you put on her bra and panties? They all know about that. That's why they're giggling every time you walk into the room. You know what, ladies? I'm not making fun of it. I'm jealous of the fact that you have it, because we don't have that. That is a beautiful thing to have, that friendship thing. We don't have that. We don't have friends. Matter of fact, we don't even call our friends friends. What do we call them? Buddies, that's right. You have friendship and understanding. We have beer. That's how it works out. That's why we call them buddies. A bud is a bud. We don't care which one's there. That's right. You got a bud? Bring a bud. Come on over. Sure. But they're much more organized than men. They're amazing. Because you can get four women out on a certain night just to go out and celebrate. If you have kids, you will call ahead and get a sitter, and then you will just make those plans. We can't get four guys to go out on a certain night. The only way we can get four guys to go out on a certain night is we're going out to see four naked women. That's all we can do. It. You can bet where there's going to be some naked women, there will be some beer. I'll tell you that right now. But they're much more organized. They are much more organized. They're in charge of a lot of things, too. They're in charge of a lot of things. What are in charge? Well, you know this. You came with the house. <laughs> They're in charge of closet space. Yeah. Yeah. What jurisdiction does that fall under? As soon as they move in, that's what they start. They go right to the club. Well, this, this will be yours right here. This space, this, this little shoebox. That'll be yours. Put all your stuff there. And I get all this over here. I get all this so I can fill it with clothes that just don't fit me anymore! It's my butt fat. <laughs> Women are in charge of that. Women are in charge of the fashion. Now, I was asking you guys, you look very smooth together. Now, that's a very smooth sweater. Did she pick out that sweater? Dad did. Wow. <laughs> You guys were holding out on me. That's what's going on in here. I asked you what the hell was going on. Apparently there was some sort of family gift-giving ceremony. Like, well, don't tell them. Don't say anything. <laughs> Dad, where is Dad? You don't know? Okay. But you just know Dad gave him the sweat. Did Dad pop in? Okay. I'm in charge of the fashion. I'm in charge of the fashion. You know, 26 years, man. I'm in charge of the fashion. Let me give you a prime example of what I'm talking about. I'm doing a show in Lewiston, Idaho, because I am huge in this business. <laughs> You're lucky I'm here tonight. You can touch me after the show. Now, I'm in Lewiston, Idaho. There's a guy seated up front. He is wearing a bright orange Reese's peanut butter cup shirt. <laughs> and a pair of culottes or gauchos. I have no idea what the hell he had on his legs. He gets up and he goes to the restroom. I snap on his wife. I said, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> Letting him come out of the house like that. And she says, me? Why is it my fault? I said, because a woman is in charge of the fashion. It is only a woman that will say to a man once he is fully dressed, well, you're not going to wear that, are you? <laughs> say that. No man will ever say you're not going to wear that, are you? Because of two reasons. One, we don't have time for the fight. Two, oh yeah, we know how long it took you to pick out that outfit. We are not sending you back up there again. And two, another Lamont Ferguson statement. And I don't really care what the reaction is. Men, you can back me up on this if you want to. Ladies, listen up. We don't care what you wear. <laughs> We don't. We don't care what you wear. I know that sounds cruel, but I'm telling you, as men, the only thing that we care about is that you are ready to go. That's it. <laughs> so you can wear whatever it is you want to wear. We're late. You come downstairs, wear what you want to. A big old floral bonnet, a dashiki, mini skirt, leg warmers, and big floppy clown shoes. Looks good. Let's go. <laughs> Six years, 19 years, 26 years now, now, even though we may have our own little secrets as far as what we believe, no relationship goes along perfectly. Are we right there? Of course not. We had our fair share of spats, have we not? Yes, 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 oh yeah, yeah, see? You get into a fight with a woman, and the word ass 
asshole comes flying out of a woman's mouth at the drop of a hat. Women love that word. Just as soon as you get, God, you're an asshole. You're such an ass asshole. God, you're an asshole. My friends are right. You're an asshole. I don't even know why I'm with you, asshole. God, you're such an asshole. They love it, you asshole. God, you're such an asshole. What am I doing here, asshole? Women love that word so much, they believe it should be part of the vows. Do you take this asshole? That's what they think. Been called an asshole, sir? No, hell, you, no. You said no. Liar. I'm, I'm with him. <laughs> Me and the Rain Man were bonding there. Do you see that? Me and bonding with him. I'm sorry. That yell, I should have I should have rephrased the question. Have you ever heard her call you an asshole? That's what it should have been. <laughs> Man, you take the number of times she's thought it, that's exponential, man. Just an asshole to the nth power. That's what that is. Asshole, I don't know what I'm doing with you, asshole. It takes a long time before a man calls a woman a name. It takes us a long, long time. No, it does. It does. It does. They may, well, you know what? I don't say that they would not call you a name. I'm saying it's going to take a long time. Because every man to a man in this room firmly believes this. No matter how bad an argument is, no matter how deep into the fight you are, we all believe that some way, somewhere, somehow, we can turn it around so we can still end up getting laid that night. We all believe that. We all believe that. So we will take a whole barrage of assholes and just wait for our opening. That's an asshole. You're waiting. Asshole, I'm still here. Asshole, that's what we're doing. It takes us a long time before the word comes out. Once it does get fed up and the word does come out, we've made a decision because we know that once we've called you a name, game over. We've thrown in the towel. We know there is no way we can win this fight. We do, it's over with. We know that. So once it does, you know what? I've had it. No, really. No, this is just, no, I've had enough of this. I'm just tired of putting up with you because you are such a, once you get up to that word, everything goes in slow motion. The word itself comes out and stuff. You are such a, there's lights flashing, there's a little kid over in the corner going, Get up, champ, get up! <laughs> and you say the word bitch, and it's just silent. Oh, okay, I'll be packing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know what I did. Sir, you didn't even say the word, you just said a letter, asshole. See? <laughs> you ever been that mad to where the word came out of your mouth? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah I'm with you, man. See, that's what comes next. Just asshole, asshole, and then fucking asshole. That's what. You just packed up. You don't even pack up. Just get in the car and ride. That's all that happened. <laughs> fucking asshole. Man. <laughs> you have kids? How many kids? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> just checking if they do. Here's, here, by the way, let me call the comedy audible because I know we've been here a long time. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about some kid stuff. I will talk about... Sports. The Pope? Sports. Okay, sports. The Pope. <laughs> okay, scratch the Pope. Sports, then the band record. Childhood stuff, sports, band record. Take, I'm like Casey Kasem now. People are yelling up her quest. Sports, well, this goes out to a guy in the back. <laughs> So you have kids, yes. How many kids do we have? Two kids. How old are they? <laughs> uh, how old are those other people in the house? No, the ones that keep losing the tools. How old are those people? Four and four and two. Four and two. 
Uh, so you're really happy to be yeah. on the house horn, too. Did you go through the natural childbirthing process? Now, how long was your longest labor? There's only two kids. <laughs> how tough could this be? And what was that? 18 hours. Yeah, I like that. You're hurting other people. I like that. Even though that does sound like a lot. It does. It didn't even phase me. See that, sir? It didn't phase me at all. Not for the sake that I've been through something like that, but I have a feeling, because I've been doing this a long time. There's someone in this room that's probably had a labor longer than 18 hours. Even though 18 hours sounds like an incredible number, there probably is. Is there? See? How long? 32 hours. I heard, did I hear three days? Did someone say that? 48. 48. 48 over there. Two hours. I, I wouldn't have said that actually in here because we got the women all riled up. Two hours, man. The women are thinking, bitch, it took me two hours to get his fat ass off the sofa to take me to the hospital. You better shut up over there. Two goddamn hours. You, you don't have any say in this at all. 72 hours. Man, do they even know you were pregnant? They have any idea what the hell they were doing? 70, 72 hours? Man, they, I don't even know if they do know you're pregnant. You just walk in. Well, look at her. She done all swelled up. Look at her. Well, soak it in some Epsom salt. Maybe that'll make it go down. I, uh, we, we went through the natural childbirth. Did you know the sex of the kids before they were born? Yeah, went through the ultrasound sonogram deal. You guys know what I'm talking about? They take the gel, they put it on my wife's stomach, they run the sound waves through, out pops a Polaroid picture, boom! Instantaneously, a picture of this thing, just like that. Doctor hands it to me and says, what do you think? <laughs> what do I think? Mm, I think there's a storm coming. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a low pressure system located right over here. <laughs> child, our daughter, was a C-section delivery. C-section. I, yeah, I was in the room for the C-section. Yeah, that's wrong, isn't it? Yeah, there's, there's nothing more wrong than me being in the room for the C-section. We waited all this time, and the doctor finally came in and said, we've got to go get the baby, put these on, <laughs> and meet me in the operating room. And I thought, Doc, I am highly underqualified <laughs> to meet you anywhere, to be honest with you. I can wait for you in the weight room, but I can't be me. No, put these on and meet me in there. So I go and I scrub, because I see a lot of Trapper John. I figure that's what you do. I scrub up. And I'm in there waiting, because I got the thing, and I'm waiting. And I don't mean to be graphic or gross, but listen up. When they make that initial incision, there is not just a baby coming out right there. There is a whole bunch of other... Stuff. <laughs> stuff and shit. I love it when a crowd uses medical terms. That's what's so great. Just like in the journal, stuff and shit, page 12. <laughs> stuff to go through before they actually get to the baby. I kid you not, they take the bladder and set it right up on top of the ribs. Now that can't be right right there. No, you can't have body parts all over the room like that. You can't sit that there, hold that there, hold your finger here while I tie a bow. No! And he says, no, that's what we do, that's what we do. So they get the baby out and they bring the baby over to you. And he says, so, do you want to cut the umbilical cord? And I said, well, do you want to knock something off the price? <laughs> and, uh, I met you in the operating room, you know. the difference is between the men and the women type of deal and they found out in just a series of one joke. I did a show and I, this is why I realized I always need to have women in my audience because I just apparently do not think along the same lines as men do when men get together by themselves. A couple of weeks ago I fixed something. I fixed something. I found something that was wrong, a little plumbing problem. I took it apart. I took it down to the hardware store and I fixed it myself. I asked my wife who was sitting there not doing anything at the time. I go, you want to go with me down to the hardware store to pick up this part? And she goes, oh, no, that's all right. I'll go with you on the second trip. <laughs> Exactly. I don't know why that's the only thing to bet on the first time through to begin with. The cashier just look at you and go, that's the wrong one. I'm sorry. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> All right, I gotta get out of here because I'm 
way over any people. You've been very... No, we gotta go. We've, we've, it's like a big comedy marathon is what's going on here. I would love to stay. I'll be honest with you, people. I'd love to stay, but uh, let, me, let me share something with you because we've bonded so far. I am just not ready to commit to one audience right now. There! other comics and I'll see other crowds. I just think it'd be best we go our separate ways. And that really bothers me because the last thing I ever wanted to do was hurt other people. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> I'll call you, really. Um, and I wish you guys a very happy, safe uh, New Year's and uh, a very, very pleasant 95. Are you back? She's, you came in for the last round. Good luck to Colorado State. You're welcome. And, uh, and, and good luck to you. I know the show's been running long, been keeping you. <laughs> Twenty-six year married folks that came with the house. Good luck to you kids. <coughs> and uh, the sweater guy. <laughs> the new heavyweight champ in the world, Big George Foreman. How about that, huh? Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing that George Foreman is a heavyweight champion. It's amazing that George Foreman got the opportunity to be the heavyweight champion. You know what's amazing to me is the fact that they, everyone's fighting. Every Leon Spinks is still fighting. Yes, which means it is not far down the line from you and I getting a letter in the mail going, well, you got to step in. You know, I may have already been the heavyweight champion. What is that? <laughs> Everyone is in. Larry Holmes is still fighting. Leon Spinks is still fighting. Everybody's fighting, which is amazing to me because of the fact that uh, at the end of a fight, this is my favorite part of the fight, they always interview the loser of the fight. The guy that took the most punishment, the guy that took the most blows to the head, put a camera and microphone in front of him and see what he has to say. He always has the same thing to say. What else can he say? What happened during the fight? Uh, he hit me. <laughs> and then I fell down. That's it. He can't add anything else to that. We saw that. You, that's it. You fell down. Here's the problem. Everyone step in the ring, then get some guy watching the ring that takes so much punishment, so many blows in the head, that put a camera and microphone in front of him at the end of the fight and know what the hell he's talking about. Be stuck. You just be babbling, they'll be stuck because it's network TV. What happened during the fight? I don't know. As a matter of fact, I was hoping you could tell me as to what led to my untimely demise in the ring. I remember hearing a bell. Someone hit me in the face with a brick. I thought, how rude. I believe the bell was a warning. You know, like ding, ding, here come a brick. Next thing I know, there was an employee from the Foot Locker counting out how many pairs of shoes I had recently purchased. do that and then we're done, because they're getting antsy on the light. <laughs> Which, if you'd have been paying attention to the act, you'd know exactly when it would finish. Um, the, uh, <coughs> I wish you guys very well. And, uh, you know, a lot of comics do impressions during their acts. And I've been working on an impression that set me a breed apart from any other comic in the country ever since I've been in show business. And I've been in show business for a very long time. Since, uh, oh gee, since I was on radio back in the late 40s. And uh, <laughs> I know a lot of you two don't remember that, but this is kind of obscure, kind of in and out. You've got to watch very closely. This is my impression of every band director from every 1940s big band musical movie. Take sir. Sure. 